Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on exact value problem. Here we have a nasty thing to evaluate and this problem actually has a lot meat onto it and there's a quite a bit of steps. First thing we need to do is how to find a sine of r over 2. Okay, this one is pretty interesting to do. Once we find that, we need to do the sine, uh, actually we need to find a cosine of uh, tangent inverse of minus 2. We'll see in a minute why it become a cosine. And from there, then we need to figure out how to determine the sine And then, then we get the answer. So this is actually a pretty involved question here. So let's do one step at a time. Over here, in order to find this one, we're going to use a cosine of 2 alpha is actually have two forms, or well, three forms. Cosine pink square minus sine square is equal to two, uh, 1 minus twice of sine square alpha, or twice cosine of square alpha minus 1. Now, if you don't memorize this, it's not a big deal. The thing you do need to know is the very top one. From this definition, you can derive the other two. And from there, the thing we're actually going to be using is the sine alpha, because we're looking for sine alpha half. So basically, cosine of 2 alpha is equal to 1 minus twice sine squared alpha. Let's manipulate this one a little bit. 1 minus cosine alpha is equal to twice sine squared of alpha. From there, we know that sine alpha is equal to take the radical root plus minus 1 minus cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. Now, you might be wondering, well, there's no half angle from there. However, notice this one. Alpha and 2 alpha is in the ratio of 1 over 2. So, equivalently, we can say, well, sine theta over 2, if I half this angle, then I'm going to double the angle over there. So it's 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. And that's the formula we're going to be using for the equation over here. Okay. Now, second step 2 here. I'm probably going to run out of room here. Step 2 over here. Now we know sine of alpha over 2 is involved with really sine of a cosine of the alpha. So let's define this one. Let's write it as some uh, other place over here. I'm running out of room quicker than I thought. Okay, so what we started with was sine of tangent inverse of 2, negative 2, over 2. And we're going to let alpha equal to tangent inverse of 2. This is the most uh, frustrating part of a lot of students, you need to recognize that arc, sin, arc trig functions, arc tangent, arc sine, arc cosine, whatever they throw at you, this one actually give you an angle back. Okay, so since we know this one, then we have sine of alpha over 2 is equal to what we derived earlier, 1 minus cosine alpha over 2. So we need to find cosine of alpha. Effectively, we need to figure out what cosine of tangent inverse of minus 2 is. Now, this is what we call exact value. Okay. Don't let it threaten you. So the first thing we need to do is we'll go find this couple steps, actually. Tangent to curve looks like this. The reason I want to mention tangent to curve is you need to know which quadrant to put the tangent minus 2 is, because there are two quadrants where tangent is negative. You can go in quadrant number 4, 4 is the other way, quadrant number 4, or quadrant number 2. Okay, It turned out using the tangent curve here, tangent of uh, inverse negative number is actually in quadrant number 4, so minus 2 becomes a pretty easy thing for us. So here's our alpha. Okay, so this is minus 2 and 1, so the hypotenuse is radical 5. 
Okay. Now this part is actually pretty important, so pay attention to it. And if it's not clear, look into your textbook and make sure this one is actually clear, clear for you. Now from here, the rest of the stuff it's pretty easy. Cosine alpha in quadrant four is a positive number, and it's going to be one over radical five. Okay, so then we have most of our, our material needed. Since cosine alpha is equal to 1 over radical 5, then I have sine of alpha 2 is equal to a radical root. Now notice I have to pick a minus sign because we're in quadrant 4. Okay, so sine alpha in quadrant 4 is a negative. So all right, here is I have 1 minus cosine alpha divided by 2. The rest stuff, it's pretty much just evaluate. So let's finish this one. 1 minus, let's uh, rationalize it a little bit. So it's radical 5 over 5 divided by 2. And then one more step and I'm done. So I have a 10 over here. And then it's 5 minus radical 5. Okay, so that's the final answer over here. And then I went on to the Wolfgram here. I hope you can see it. This is a really neat program. All right, so on the bottom here, now you notice that they have a weird expression over there. It's minus 2 over 5 plus radical 5. So it turned out if you rationalize this one, we're going to have the same thing. So minus 2, 5 plus radical 5. And then let's rationalize this. 5 minus radical 5. 5 plus radical 5. The reason I want to show you is sometimes when you use the computer, they give you a different answer. It's up to you to make sure you actually got exactly the same thing. It becomes 2 uh, minus here, radical 5. And then it's 25 minus 5. So I have radical with minus sign 2 times 5 minus radical 5. And then here I have 20. And this is exactly what we end up with. Okay, so remember here, it's minus 5 minus radical 5 over 10. Okay, so the whole thing is the same. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun. At least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.